Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Victorian Cowboy and today we're once again talking about uh, The Blood of Elves by Andrzej Sapkowski. Uh, it is the book club that we started. Uh, we, well, I have just read the first 15-ish pages of chapter 4, I believe. So, they have, um, uh, Triss, Siri, and Geralt have just left Kaer Morin in the spring. Uh, they've made it to the, the outpost, the little fort, and found that it's got some problems going on. But in addition to the problems the fort has with the Skoytel, the, uh, the wood elves, Triss is suffering from what appears to be dysentery or some sort of illness. Um, which she can't take potions for or use some magic for. She left her amulets back at the, uh, the castle and so she's in a world of hurt and is pretty much out of it. Now, the, th the major thing about this portion, I think uh, one of the most interesting things, one of the most troubling things is uh, not only Triss being ill, which any anybody being anybody being that sick is problematic, but um, really what it is uh, at the post, the knight having the conversation with the merchants and talking about wanting to round up all the non-humans and and that that sheer like iron fist ruling. Um, it really reminded me a lot of what happened during World War Two in America with the. Uh, the internment caps for the Japanese where even though it wasn't all of them that did anything or even if it wasn't even a majority of them in America very very few of the Japanese in America really attacked us uh, you round them all up and you vilify this large group of people uh, in this case for the book the the non-humans and you punish them all for uh, a splinter groups issues um, which I think just reading that um, really hit me about how this is essentially what world politics is like today where you have people in power trying to vilify large groups of people at the same time and saying everybody is like this um, and to some degree there are people on both sides who are who are uh, painting things with a broad brush um, but it's a really dangerous road to go down if you're going to start uh, start saying that everybody of this particular um, nationality, race, religion um, is guilty of what a splinter group does. Um, and so just listening to the knight say and how vehemently he believed it and then just how heavy-handed he and then the government it would appear seems to be. Um, and while they may be somewhat justified in fearing for their lives like this is borderline paranoia so yes there's that splinter group of the Scoyatel who's wreaking havoc on these fortresses but the merchants don't think they're going to get hit uh though the main concern is there's the war with Nilfgaard that's brewing on the horizon again and if that were to happen there's the belief that the uh these elves and all these uh, the elves and it goes beyond the elves because the elves technically are siding with Nilfgaard who treats them with slightly more respect rather than second class citizens but the knight goes on to say the gnomes and the dwarves several of whom fought against Nilfgaard at the second battle of uh, oh I forget the name of it now the the second battle of the not the psalm uh, of the hill whatever it was um, anyway the the idea that you're going to just vilify this entire group that is extraordinarily large and try and regulate them rein them in um, it has some negative ramifications and it's definitely ter terrifying to think that those ideas don't go away that's a go-to when there's these types of conflict uh, both in fiction and in the real world um, that's the bulk of this section um, Geralt doesn't want Ciri to see the dead bodies um, and so she but she wants to she wants to learn about the world um, unfortunately she's learning about the world and 
well, the world she lives in is really bleak and dark, and there's not as much hope. Um, like, I, I feel like in our world, we try to, to keep that hope alive regardless of how bleak the consequences are and help encourage some of that innocence until someone reaches a point where it's clear that they need to know the truth. So that way, like, even even for someone like myself, I like to believe that there's still that hope, even though I can look around and see horrible things going on everywhere. Um, and I think the interesting thing about, say, Geralt is he recognizes how cruel the world can be. And while he's training Ciri to deal with that, he's not necessarily going to sugarcoat the fact that the world is a rough place. And... In her defense, Siri has experienced so much trauma. Um, as a teacher who's worked with students who've experienced serious traumas, um, there is a lot of the sense of there's n like children are aging up faster. And when I say that, I don't necessarily mean physically, but they they know about things that say me who hasn't experienced those traumas didn't know about until I hit say high school, and then knowing about them. It, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. Um, and so Siri is one of those children who has learned about these things and is going to affect her development. We already see that. Um, though Geralt is trying to give her at least some sort of mechanism to deal with the, the, the horrors that she faced in the past by training her to never have to suffer them again in the future. Um, but the knight tells them they need to go I believe it's down the south road there was a caravan but it's not like merchants it's more of a royal caravan um, and that's where I ended reading this particular chapter is I think 60 or 70 pages and with the school year actually starting up this week I haven't managed to get away I've been preparing a classroom and a theater and, and all sorts of things like that but thank you for joining us uh, please comment tell us your thoughts uh, I understand this was slightly more political, but I feel like this book is going to get into some some of those politics because it's hard to avoid in a book about these large-scale nation conflicts and these individuals caught up in them. Um, I, for one, enjoy talking politics, but I understand it can be a hot-button issue, and so I don't want to put anyone on the spot. I don't want to make anybody feel upset about expressing their opinions. Granted, hate is not a really great opinion to express and so for instance the knight expressing this this disgust mistrust and hatred of non-humans I feel is really problematic and and needs to be addressed but no like and there was a one merchant who tried to call him out on it but didn't really um, push the issue or we got escorted out of that scene before he could push the issue so that being said, I think there's definitely a lot of conflict to come, um, and I'm looking forward to reading it. Thank you for joining me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of our video. We do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give us a like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you thought, and as always, have a good one.